This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all our viewers and the subscribers. I trust that you all are having a wonderful morning. Now, in the news for today, November 2, 2022, Clarence Nunn couple murdered in front of whom? A businessman and his spouse were gone down at the entrance of their home in Tollgate, Clarendon, on Tuesday evening. They have been identified as 61-year-old Evan Francis and 46-year-old Alicia Francis. Reports are that about 5.30 p.m., the couple arrived at their Duke Street Tollgate home in separate vehicles. Mr. Francis got out of his vehicle and proceeded to open the gate to the house when gunmen pounced and opened fire on the couple before fleeing. The police were alerted and upon their arrival on the scene, found Mr. Francis lying on his back in front of his Nissan Caravan motor vehicle, suffering from gunshot wounds to the upper body and right wrist, while Mrs. Francis was seen slumped over in the front seat of her Toyota Corolla fielder with a gunshot wounds to the head and upper body. They were pronounced dead at hospital. Unconfirmed reports are that the deceased are related to a taxi driver, Kendrick Francis, who was shot and killed in Tollgate on Monday. Driver in eight-vehicle crash had 120 tickets. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson said the bus driver involved in the eight-vehicle crash yesterday morning had over 120 outstanding traffic tickets. In a dash cam video acquired by the news, a Toyota Coaster bus can be seen barreling into the back of a Volkswagen pickup truck that in turn ran into other vehicles. The accident caused a heavy buildup of traffic on Constant Spring Road for several hours, forcing the public to take alternate routes. Further lamenting the importance of the new electronic ticketing system, Anderson said this incident exemplifies the need for real consequences to traffic infractions. Speaking at a press conference on Tuesday afternoon, the commissioner said that this is a point that I have been making in this business of what happens on our roads. Until when the police issue these tickets, it matters. We will continue to have these people do all kinds of things on the road. He continued, we had some discussions recently about when the new regulations of the Road Traffic Act comes into force and the other challenges that there are in the system to get the proper consequences associated with breaches of the Traffic Act. The police can write tickets and we write tickets as per what we are allowed to do. And when there is a warrant, we go for the person who does it. Holness embarrassed by garbage pileup. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he is embarrassed to see the levels of garbage in public spaces. It is of great concern to the government, he told the House of Representatives on Tuesday. However, he said 50 garbage trucks are in transit to Jamaica and are expected to ease the chronic problem of delays in collecting waste. In her contribution to the state of the constituency debate earlier in the House, Member of Parliament for St. Catherine Eastern, Denise Daly, lamented the appalling conditions across the country with uncollected garbage. Jamaica Dotti, Daly declared as she commented on the unsightly pileup of garbage across the country, threatening what she said could be a disease outbreak. Holness yesterday announced that $5 million was being allocated to each constituency for garbage collection over the coming weeks. In Westmoreland, dozens of unlicensed bikes seized by the police. Police in Westmoreland have removed in excess of 80 illegal motorcycles from the streets in the first two weeks of an initiative to stem the frequency of road fatalities in the parish. Since January 2022, the Road Safety Unit in the Ministry of Transport and Mining says that 376 persons have been killed across the island in 327 fatal collisions. According to Westmoreland's Operations Chief Deputy Superintendent of Police, Adrian Hamilton, the initiative which started in early October has been successful. Speaking with the news, Hamilton said that criminals have chosen motorcycles because the getaway drivers are able to effectively navigate the traffic. Many of our criminal offenses that have been committed, as well as traffic breaches, are committed with motorcycles, Hamilton said. Hamilton said the traffic department, as well as detectives from the criminal investigation branch in the parish, is seeking to identify the owners of the bikes and to determine whether they were used to commit crimes. 
We are doing investigations around these motorcycles when they are held, especially when they are unlicensed, to look at unlawful possession of the property, receiving stolen property, especially in instances where that ownership cannot be established, Hamilton explained. Despite those early successes, the police revealed that they are grappling with storage but were working to dispose of the motorcycles once the investigations are completed. Data from the Road Safety Unit revealed that road fatalities have increased by 3%, while fatal crashes have fallen by 5% when compared with January 1 to October 31 last year this time. Last year, there were 487 road fatalities, the highest in the country's history. Motorcyclists account for 30% of the 376 road fatalities recorded, pedestrians account for 21%, private motor vehicle drivers account for 19%, and the public passenger vehicle drivers are responsible for 2% of those killed across the island to date. In Westmoreland this year, there have been 42 fatalities, while Hanover recorded 25. St. Elizabeth has recorded 25 crash fatalities, while Trelawney has registered 24. 14-day amnesty starts November 5 before full force of law. Minister of National Security Dr. Harris Chang on Tuesday announced a 14-day gun amnesty as the penalty regime for the new Firearms Prohibition and Restriction Act comes into effect. The amnesty is to begin on November 5 and end on November 19, Chang told the colleague lawmakers in the lower house. Noting that breaches of the act, which were gazetted hours before his announcement, would result in penalties ranging from 15 years to life imprisonment, the minister said that the amnesty would allow persons in possession of illegal or unregistered firearms and ammunition to surrender their weapons to the state without the fear of prosecution. It's not just a criminal change in his mind. There are individuals who may have inherited a firearm from grandfather or uncle who may have had it locked in a safe and just had not paid any attention to it, Chang said. There might also be young men living in a tough community who are honest, hard-working individuals. They might have applied for a firearm license and they did not get it, acquired a firearm with no intention of committing a criminal act, and therefore find themselves exposed. We are providing an opportunity for them to surrender the firearm, he added. He said that persons who hand over weapons to the state or disclose the location of an illegal firearm or ammunition during the period will not be charged with illegal possession, custody or control of the firearm. The weapons may be surrendered to the police through an attorney at law or persons may call the numbers provided in the order. Once the amnesty expires, we can expect the full force of the law to be applied to anyone found in possession of an illegal firearm or ammunition, he said noting that the amnesty does not impair the police in dealing with her criminals. He argued that the amnesty is not unique to Jamaica and has been announced to help with the reduction of violence in the country. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson on Tuesday disclosed that 652 illegal firearms have been seized since January, an 11% increase year on year. There has also been a 40% increase in the seizure of rifles and a 10% increase in pistols seized. The latest crime figures point to a 4.6% increase in major crimes since January, with murders up by 7.5%, robberies up by 20%, and break-ins up by 9%. However, shootings are down by 6% and rapes by 12%. Chang told the parliament that on average, in the last 25 years, Jamaica has recorded 1,270 murders, the vast majority of which were committed using illegal firearms. Opposition leader Mark Golding called for extensive training of the police, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, and the judiciary as it relates to the provisions of the new act. He said a failure to do this will affect how the legislation works. Additionally, Golding raised the concerns about the absence of accountability under the amnesty order. He wants a register to be established when a weapon is surrendered and a receipt generated for that weapon with its specifics, including serial number and make. Right now, it just says go in and hand in a weapon, and there is no paperwork around that, and there is no accountability. It may be that there is an intention to implement that operationally, but I would have thought that the order itself would have required it, said Golding. He suggested that a supplemental order be brought to the House before Saturday.
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.